Okay, welcome to another Bible study. <laughs> oh, Bible Lord, study should be fun tonight. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be fun tonight. We're gonna have some laughs. We're gonna say, "What the heck?" <laughs> That's what's gonna happen tonight. Cause tonight it's <laughs> I'm not gonna do much talking more than we're both gonna be looking at stuff and we're gonna be like, "I can't believe people are that dumb." <laughs> That's basically where we're going. So. Alright, it's not gonna stay too what? long in getting this because I'm gonna be talking much, we're gonna be doing a lot more watching off videos and stuff than anything else tonight. But let us open in a word of prayer. Dear God, we just wanna thank you, we just wanna praise you for allowing us to be here and we're thankful that we can have another Bible study. We pray now whatever we say and do that you get all the honor and the glory and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So scriptures that cause you to think simple topic you see many times you read the scripture you ever read some scriptures and after you read it you're like I wonder you know some questions come to your head like is this happening yet really in today's world is this happening or stuff like this scripture is a little bit harsh <laughs> wonder if God could just tone it down a little bit you ever seen some of those scriptures that you're like oh it's a little bit harsh well yeah and then Sometimes we say, maybe it will happen in the future because it's not happening yet. Well, we're going to look at some of these scriptures and some of these verses. Just look at them. And then we're going to see if they're happening now in today's time, if it's correct. And so the first scripture I want to look at, this is one of them that's a bit harsh. <laughs> right, listen to this one. And for this reason, God will send them a strong delusion. God He's going to send people a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. <laughs> right? That they all may be condemned who do not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. In other words, what God is saying, you keep on going down this road and you keep on believing this thing and you know it's wrong, I'm going to just let you keep believing it. And so, I'm going to just keep tricking you Keep feeding you it, and you ain't gonna come out of it because you want you love pleasure and righteousness. So I'm gonna keep you there. And when you look at the word delusion, right? It says a distinctive belief or impression that is firmly maintained despite being contradicted. What is generally accepted as reality or rational argument, typically a symptom of mental disorder. We ain't going to the mental disorder, but. A distinctive belief that doesn't change from the natural order. So if somebody says cows fly, we're like, in your world, <laughs> in our world, cows don't fly. But if this person believes cows fly, then that means they're delusional, right? So that's basically what can happen. Another um, meaning of delusion, the act of tricking or deceiving someone. And say, God said he's going to send them a strong delusion that they believe in. And synonyms of delusion, deception, misleading, deluding, fooling, tricking, trickery, duping. <laughs> God is going to do that to people who continue down a certain road. And he, you're going to see, we're going to be looking at it and like, he can't understand that cows don't fly. And this person is going to be convinced that cows fly. <laughs> Basically, that's what God is going to do. And so, this next video that I'm about to show you, I've used him many times already, but I use this particular video clip of him because there is so much things in there that if it didn't take a rocket scientist to figure out this guy was wrong, but yet still people fell for it. And so, we're going to look at him in this video. And see if you can pick out the parts where some of them are believing some delusional stuff. That word, dead, dead to sin. Jose Luis de Jesus Miranda claims to be the second coming of Jesus Christ. Hmm. And his followers believe every word. Look this is a historic event, knowing that God is here on earth. I am the you second see coming of Christ. <laughs> six, six, that six, Messiah six. that they've been waiting for. We first introduce you to de Jesus Miranda in 2006. He runs a worldwide organization, Creciendo en Gracia, or Growing in Grace, that he claims has millions of followers. 
He preaches a message of freedom to indulge. His message tells us that we're perfect, that there's no sin, that there's no devil. And also, no hell. They call you a no sinner. sin, no devil, no hell. You feel hurt. <laughs> that message, one theology expert told us, appeals to followers. So people who think of the Christian church as being a downer as always talking about people being sinners and so forth. The danger Mitchell warned is that with such devout followers, this has signs of a cult. Oh, yeah. Jesus Miranda wants to establish a world government with himself as leader. He's also been criticized for accepting expensive gifts from followers, including watches and cars, and living an extravagant lifestyle. And he took all your sins away. Still, followers don't seem to care. Or a man they say cares so much for them. It's a very positive message. De Jesus Miranda has over 300 learning centers worldwide, including one in Houston, where he sometimes runs his organization. Kevin Peters for CBS News. Now, if the person is not a Christian, let's just say somebody's just religious. <laughs> And they walk into a Tulpa Hawkin and they see me decorate the pulpit with 666. They're going to make a U-turn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everybody knows 666 means the Antichrist or something to do with the devil mm -hmm. and all of that. And people <laughs> seeing that. And when they ask him what the 666 means, this man tells them it means the Antichrist, the other type of Christ, which is me. <laughs> I don't get it. There's who can that work? All you have to do is check the Bible and see what it means. If you want to go check the Greek, you realize he's going to tell you a different meaning for it. And it's already set in the Bible in stone what it is. And they shall get the mark of the beast on their forehead and on their... It's already there! So how is it that you're going to say it's a different thing? But guess what? You wanted to go down that road? So what did he give you? A strong delusion and you're going to believe the lie. Now, if you're not delusional when you see 666 and think this is God, something wrong. <laughs> so the Bible ain't lying when he says he's going to give it to you and you're going to have it and you're going to be stuck like that. <coughs> so hold on. I want to give you these other set of persons because they're now claiming certain things are not seen anymore and so they're in churches and saying churches were wrong. Look at this set of persons here. Holy is the name of Jesus. It would be a typical evangelical service were it not for the gay worshippers in the pews. They were at the National City Christian Church in Washington recently. For a meeting of the Reformation Project, the group seeks full acceptance for LGBT people in evangelical churches. Before we move on to talking point number five, I just want to recap. Where are we? How is everyone doing? Matthew Vines gained a following right. after posting this video testimonial on YouTube. I am gay. I didn't choose to be gay. In the Christian Bible, the Apostle Paul condemns what he calls shameless sexual acts between men. But Vines says loving homosexual relationships were practically unknown back then. The heart of Scripture's teaching is that marriage is about commitment that is about keeping one's covenant with one's spouse in the same way that God keeps his covenant with us. And that's something that same-sex couples can do just as well as opposite-sex couples can. Vines argues that a teaching like this that has failed in its objective and caused a lot of suffering cannot be correct. But critics say he's just reinterpreting scripture to justify his own sexual orientation. One critic is Sam Alberry, who recently addressed the Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission of the Southern Baptist Convention. What you have to do to the Bible to make it approve of same-sex relationships is profoundly unevangelical. Evangelical Christians read much of Scripture literally. But evangelical scholar David Gushy says the parts about homosexuality are blown out of proportion. The Bible has 31,273 verses. The number of verses that can be called on uh, to support the traditional position uh, is essentially, well, six passages, maybe uh, 15 verses at the most. Gushy recently changed his own position. You're a movement whose time has come. An expert on the Holocaust, he says biblical distortions have resulted more than <coughs> once in what he calls unchristlike behavior. I think it remains very hard for Christians to say this simple thing. We were wrong. We've been wrong on slavery. 
on race, on women, on a whole host of issues. Gushy says Protestant Christianity is supposed to be a self-reforming faith, and he believes lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender members will only elevate this spiritual community. Jerome Sokolowski, POA News, Washington. <laughs> No, he, he got one thing right when he says Christians are wrong. Of course Christians make mistakes and Christians can be wrong. It, no, that, sure, I make mistakes. But when you say a sin is not a sin, you can't say Christians were wrong because we never called it a sin. We inherited it just like anybody else. We came into the religion just like anybody else. We accepted Jesus by faith and the book he gave us. And all of us got the same book to use. So it wasn't us that made this the same. So when he's saying Christianity is wrong, he's, he's saying Christians need to accept that they're wrong. Christians never said it was that in the beginning. It was God who gave it to us. So in essence, when he says Christians are wrong, he's saying God is wrong. He needs to just fess up and say that. Again now with the other guy that says, Oh, back in the old days, back in the first century, no, there was no homosexual relationship that two people committed with each other. How the heck you know where you living at that time? <laughs> there are many history books that talked about people that had homosexual lives back then and with their partner. Oh no, you come and say there is none. Now, where's your authority that says that? It's not history. He's saying, no, they can do it, but they weren't doing it then. Who told him that they weren't doing it then? He didn't bring homosexuality. Was, was Sodom and Gomorrah a long time before he was even created? So how he's going to tell you now that, hey, this is how it goes and it's not a sin anymore and the Bible has failed. But yet still, they still want to use the same Bible to say they're Christian. I keep on telling persons, go make your own religion. Stop trying to fix ours to suit you. And then say it's Christianity. Just go form something else with yourself. And who want to believe that? Go and believe that. That's all I'm saying. Like the other guy did. You mean? Yeah. Go form your own religion. I always tell persons, I want Christians. I want Christians in church. I want sinners in church. I don't care what sin they do, whether they're homosexual, whether they're thieves, whether they're what, because. If they come to church, that's where they're going to get the power and saving of God to change them from what they're doing. But I tell everybody this as well. If someone is a criminal or a thief and he comes to the church and we know he's struggling with money and stuff like that, no problem, we want you to come so you can stop stealing people's money. But at the same time, I'm not giving you the offering plate to walk to the back. <laughs> that's the truth, right? So... If we are not going to do that with a thief because that's a sin, it doesn't matter, then I can't let you know if I know you are sinning by living a lifestyle. Come and teach Sunday school. And I know you still have work in order to sin. It's just like you say, okay, and I tell people this, if I'm going to excuse yours as not being a sin, then when a pedophile comes to the church, I'm going to say, hey, yours is not a sin either. So you can go over, you can take my kids to the bathroom. It's scary. In other words, I've always told them when I've talked with other persons like homosexual, I said, your sin is not even the scary sin. We're not supposed to categorize, but your sin is not the scary sin. But if I say your sin is not a sin, then the scary sin gets free too. <laughs> because all child molesters know I'm going to have to excuse them. Because if I can't pick out something else, why can't I pick out that one? And he's going to say, but no, I'm not sleeping with that child. But it doesn't matter. It's a sin. Yours is a sin, theirs is a sin, and if I say yours is no longer a sin, then they can say theirs is no longer a sin. Which one is going to be a sin? You can't change it to suit your own self. And so, God is going to give certain persons, that's why you see certain persons, like some of them in the LGBT community, they can never see eye to eye with anybody else, because God has sent them a strong delusion, and they're going to believe the lie, and they can't change because they're continuing going down the same path and God keep on making it real to them so they make their own reality their own thing everything is this way and God has to accept them strong delusion and they're going to believe a lie let me get into our next verse that was the harsh verse though look at this one for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine 
people are going to not want to hear things that are regular sounding good stuff from the Bible. They're going to want to hear dumb stuff. But according to their own desires, because they have itchy ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. In other words, they're going to rather believe lies just to suit themselves. Even though it's abundantly clear that something ain't right with this, they'll still rather believe the lie. That's what the scripture says. Are we seeing stuff like this? Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. So instead of sound doctrine, people would rather hear nonsense. Instead of the truth, people would rather hear lies because they want to suit their own desires. People will believe false teachers more than the word of God. In other words, a false teacher can come up and say, God says you almost do this today. And nobody says, where is that in the Bible? We just take it as authority. Because the false teacher said it. Nobody's going to check if the false teacher is wrong. And they don't care if he's wrong. Because if he says it, it must be good. So that's what's going to happen. But this is my question that I said all the time. And my question never changes. If we are Christians, shouldn't what we believe line up with the word of God? I've always said this. If you're going to use the Bible as your marking stick or your tool that everything goes by, then shouldn't everything just line up with it? It's simple, you know. So if you're going to say, yes, we are Christians, but oh, this is not a sin, then you're not using the Bible. Just make your own religion and call your own book, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I want to show you some persons here now that people are listening to people with itchy ears and believe this. You want to see some weird stuff here now? This one's going to get you. <laughs> Look at this. You want the blessings of God? Oh, Christian, they're not yours because of the work of Jesus. No. Tithe! Give money and you'll get the blessing. If you don't, nothing for you. What has happened to the gospel of <laughs> grace? These charlatans have turned it into a gospel of works. And they have put people, wow, have they put people under bondage. This is one of the most disturbing things you might ever see. <laughs> You can think of bringing the money. You promise them if they bring money and you walk on it, then they're going to get prosperous. Huh? Here comes his friend, Crypto Dollar. So they learn some money and we get prosperous. Are they returning that money? I'm going to do that Sunday. <laughs> you want your bills paid? Then, Throw money at their feet so they can busy, dance sure. in it. What do you know? It's a prosperity gospel with a string attached. That string is works, and that means it's no gospel at all. And it says if you want your bills paid, you got to throw the money at their feet so they can dance. What? I don't know if these people are on drugs. <laughs> But I have a bill to pay, my electric bill. And you're going to tell me for me to be prosperous, I need to come and throw it at your feet. And you're going to dance in it, and then God's going to give it back to you fourfold. Well, what about just giving it normally and God giving it to me fourfold? Why do we have to come and give it to you for you to dance on it? Well, I'm telling you, you better walk in your money Sunday because I need to dance. <laughs> I, I can't hardly. I know, right? Yeah. I'm bringing my oh camera. My that's a big pastoral relationship. Darn, I do work on Sunday. Oh, you wrote well. Well, that was the ones that promised people stuff if they do give it to God. Well, look at this other set of person. He going to ask for some big major boss. Let's look at this. We started our old oh, friend Jimmy Swagger here, but we ain't going to use him. But just listen. I have sinned against you, my Lord. Okay, TV evangelists can be a little over the top. Crypto dollars appeal for a private jet. They take the cakes. We are believing for 
thousand people to give contributions of 300 US dollars or more. Doing the math, that's 60 million dollars. Mayor of the World Changers Mega Church in Atlanta asked for the donations in this almost six minute video. The Project G650, as in Gulfstream 650. Dollars, already a high flyer. We're about to land in Nairobi, Kenya. But it seems his current jet built in 1984 is showing its age. Engine trouble on a flight to Australia, and more recently, when his wife and daughters were taking off from London, it went off the runway. It's not like a car where you can pull over on the side when something goes wrong. And uh, I knew it was time to begin to believe God uh, for uh, a new airplane. It didn't take long for the story of the Jesus jet, as some have dubbed it, to take off, and not in a good way. This woman is a former parishioner. She showed up Sunday to protest, but got told to leave church property. Yeah. Have a jet when I'm not giving here. a jet money. And Get Joey out of trouble. And he has problem. one, and he's asking for another one. But parishioner Mary Jones, who takes the bus to church, says she'd happily give to Dollars Jet Drive. Most definitely, most definitely. We support our pastor. That's what we're here for. Dollar asks parishioners to give 10% of their income to the church, but gives no public accounting of how the millions are spent. Ministrywatch.com is a website that helps donors tell financially the good from the bad. We have in the past uh, identified 30 of the top ministries and 30 of the worst ministries. And unfortunately, uh, Crypto Dollar fell onto the, the worst category. And the main reason for that was the lack of financial transparency. To find out more of how Dollar wants to spend his dollars, I call Daniel Jennings. He's a big seller of private jets. This isn't kind of an entry-level jet. It's not even a mid-level jet. This is the top of the game jet. The Gulfstream 650 is the largest, longest distance, second fastest private jet in the world. And to get one, Dollar may need more than money. He might need divine intervention. The wait for a new one is four years. And there are only four used ones for sale in the entire world. If I wanted to buy a gently used one, what do you think that would send me back? The low 70s, 71, 72 million. Do they finance? <laughs> Do they finance? No, I don't get it. People are getting so much itchy ears that anything a pastor says to them, they can't believe. No, I would know. I want to know which day I can walk up into the pulpit and say to you, "Listen, I need a new truck, and you guys need to give me all the money so we can buy it cash." <laughs> How can somebody say that? Sixty-five million dollar. Now let me give my disclaimer. I'm not saying pastors don't need to jet across the world if you have different things to go. But what happened to the other airplanes? Does the airport work? Yeah, but a regular plane ticket. Exactly. Look how many miles? All right. Is now look at this. Million. If he, I'm, and I'm being, and I'm sure you're going to agree with me. If he travels for ten years, first class to every one of the places he goes, paid for by his church. He would not reach ten million dollars. Ten million. I know. Sixty-five so, million. That means he have a plane lined up to buy already. You know. He just wants to have. That's why he wants the sixty-five million. So he contact one of those four persons in the world. I can tell you that. That's why he's getting asking for this exactly sixty-five million. Mm -hmm. Insurance alone on that plane. And no. This gas. is the part that got me so much. If you can raise sixty-five million dollars to buy a plane. Why can't you raise $65 million to feed people? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that money better be put to use to feed people? You know many starving persons in the world and you can, you're asking for $65 million for a ride? And you can take first, I, I mean, I'm giving him first class, I'm giving him normal stuff, I'm giving him first class to travel. And so, persons with the itchy ears, tell them what they want to hear, tell them, and they'll do it. That's what's happening. Scripture. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 13 and 15. Look at this one. For such are false apostles. These are deceitful workers transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. So the first person, they're not Christians. They're transforming themselves to be looking like Christians. And this is what the Bible says. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. The devil always made things look pretty. Don't, no, that's what he said to Eve. Didn't God say don't? Didn't God say? You know, he makes things look so good. 
Listen to what the Bible says. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. In other words, in the end, you're going to have to answer to God. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you something. I just can't get this. This is the thing here. It is one thing when you are fooled by someone you thought was real. So, you know, I thought Rochelle was a good pastor and I saw it in her ministry and all of that and she did good and I found out she and Carl was stealing the money and, 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 and sending Katie across the world to have fun. <laughs> and then she comes back and we found out and she confesses and said, okay, she ain't gonna do it anymore. And so we give her another chance and she's back in the church but she's no longer a pastor. But then, you know, as she makes the ranks and start coming up back again, we start to see some of the signs of what was done before. Are you now going to take your money and give to her this time? No. Once bitten, twice shy, right? It makes sense. Well, this is what I learned. <laughs> Would you allow the same person to fool you again with the same act? No. Well, let me tell you something. These persons, they transform themselves into agents of light. So clearly what the Bible says, they are good at the transforming thing, right? And so they transform themselves into the angels of light. And people still fall for it over and over again. We're going to find pastors that were busted. I'm not saying alleged. I mean busted. They even went to jail and came out back, started again, and even making a better ministry than they were busted for. Oh, yeah. Let's do this. <laughs> You're going to see a whole lot of in the days to come. Yes, you're seeing some miracles. Peter Popoff, W.B. Grant, and Jim Baker have all appeared on television as prophets of God seeking a donation. I need 50 people to help me with a thousand dollars. However, all of these men have been exposed for some type of fraudulent activity. As you'll see, each of them managed to resurrect their career, continuing to do what they do best. I mean, I'm not afraid to break canes or crutches jerk people out of wheelchairs. In 1986, Peter Popoff took in around $4 million a year as a televangelist who claimed How he healed the sick. No. During his revivals, Popoff claimed that God spoke to him directly, revealing the names and ailments of his congregants. Not everyone can hear the voice of God. He then acted accordingly to fix their problems. She got shocked! Unknown to Popoff, investigator James Randi sat in on a few of his revivals with some friends, a radio scanner, and a video camera. Randy then took what he discovered and played it on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. Hello, Petey, can you hear me? If you can't, you're in trouble. Popoff was being prompted by his wife through a wireless earpiece. Sixteen months after the piece was aired, Popoff filed for bankruptcy. Ten years later, he was back on the air. Coming up, his act roughly the same. She got shot! She asked you to sprinkle over a check to prove God with a $19 offering. Or I feel that oh, millionaire the the holy water. is going to be released in this year of Jubilee. As of 2005, Peter Popoff's ministry was taking in $23 million a year. Like Popoff, W.V. Grant led local revivals across the nation, claiming to heal members of the audience on the spot. In the name of Jesus. Come on. In the name of Jesus. A favorite diagnosis of his? One leg shorter than the other. It's about two inches shorter than the leg on my side. Grant would bring the afflicted to the stage, seat them, then miraculously grow the oh, leg come on. three inches come on. instantly. Hallelujah! Yeah. Hallelujah! Everybody saw what he seat, pushed that for. Grant oh, then his congregants to that. give whatever money they had. In 1996, Grant was found guilty of failing to report $375,000 in taxable income. He was sentenced to 16 months in prison. Upon his release in 1997, he restarted his ministry in Dallas, Texas, where he solicited donations via form letters, including a square of cloth in each envelope. Sackcloth piece of a robe that we uh, were asking God to bless. While Popoff and Grant parlayed their followers' donations into lavish lifestyles, it was Jim Baker who elevated the classic televangelist operation into an organization large enough to support an entire theme park. In addition to the PTL Parker Center, Jim and then wife Tammy Faye Baker built an empire through their Praise the Lord network that at one time generated an annual revenue in excess of $100 million. After church secretary Jessica Hahn came forward stating that Baker had paid her $279,000 to stay quiet about an affair, he resigned. 
Soon afterward, the IRS launched an investigation and convicted Baker on 24 counts of financial fraud, sentencing him to 45 years in prison. While incarcerated, Baker's wife Tammy Faye filed for divorce. After five years, Jim Baker was given a reduced sentence and a release from prison. He restarted his ministry and in 2003 began broadcasting The Jim Baker Show. During every broadcast, an 800 number is provided at the bottom of the screen for you to make a donation. As of 2013, the IRS still had a lien against Jim Baker. That's when the temple gets rebuilt. Unfortunately, these men do not feed exclusively on their followers' finances. Popoff and Grant regularly call on attendees to throw their canes and medications on stage, proving for everyone they've been healed by God. I tell you, that just burns the devil up! Sadly, the criticism extends beyond the self-appointed prophets to the people who willingly give over their time, money, and influence to these operations. We've seen three examples of men who've been openly caught defrauding their congregations, only to return again with the same act. Only these days, they now accept donations via PayPal as well. <laughs> this, I don't understand. They transform themselves into agents of light and the people still fall for it. It's not like they weren't caught, they were. And the Bible talks about when you catch people doing certain things, the discipline they're supposed to get in the church. These men just come right back and do it. And everybody falls for it over again. I don't understand. Well, let's look at some other one. Now, <laughs> this particular guy tried to do a miracle, a Jesus miracle. I never thought, I've been watching him for a, a good while. I'm, I'm, as a matter of fact, it's been months. I've been on him, almost a year. Because something just didn't sit right. And I said, you're going to slip up one of these days. Then I said, oh God, please forgive me for judging persons because I don't know them. And I came back and I said, no God, he's not good. Something is going to slip up. And so, he did a miracle, but apparently the cameraman flipped too much. And his crew around him shadowed the rest from seeing what was happening. But the cameraman wasn't supposed to show something. And look what happened. Now look at the miracle he tried to perform. Raise man from there. <laughs> okay. What is his name? Jesus! No. Elliot. 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 Is he breathing? <laughs> Elliot. Yeah. Look again, you're gonna see him breathe again. Did you see him breathe again? Yes. Yeah. Here again! Cameraman and that stuff. Because there are people in the back can see. Those work with him at the front here. <laughs> Yeah. Keep breathing a lot! <laughs> now look at this, look at this. He's still gonna perform the work plus people in the back. Look at this. Anyway, because the cameraman 
didn't film it properly, he got busted, of course. Because when he hit the net, everybody saw that he was breathing. And they confronted him about it. And he said he had already started working on the man from inside the church. That was his excuse. So he started to bring life into him from before. But guess what? An answer for everything. Yeah. But guess what? He didn't have an answer for this one. When someone checked it back, now we know why the cameraman messed up. That guy was with him when he just started. He is his original cameraman. He's the one that usually was right behind him because they found this picture, did facial recognition, and found another from when he had just started working with this pastor way back when he just, he's one of the richest pastors in Africa. So now that guy has moved up and no longer is right beside him, and now he's giving technical things all around, but he needed someone trustworthy to do the act of rising up, so he went for his most trusted guy that has been with him so long. And so people found that out and pointed that out too. He'd have done better to have a physician yeah. administer that medication than when they stab him. With that would have <laughs> that would have looked better. That is scary. Yeah. Like, huh? but I'm telling you, this is what is happening. Transforming themselves into agents of light. This is this is what's happening in today's world. Next scripture. It says, "I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him." who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel. What do you mean? Well, what this verse is saying, there are people preaching a different gospel. They still have it under the head of Christianity, but it's a different gospel. It says, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But listen what the apostle said, but if it's even we or an angel from heaven, <laughs> Preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. And if you read in a little bit more, the next line says the same thing. Again, I repeat, if another person preach another gospel to you, let it be accursed. He says it twice, so we can be sure. Well, let me tell you something. Some people are thinking, it's just religion. How many different types could there be? But let me show you something. This is a fact now. It said there about... 4,200 different religions in the world. Now this is the part that some people start rejoicing about. but don't rejoice too much on it. It is said that Christianity is said to be the largest. But I don't agree with that. So I say it's not true. You know why? When you check Christianity, under Christianity you have Jehovah Witness, you have Mormons, you have Latter-day Saints, you have some that I can't even tell you what they are because <laughs> I've never even heard of them. But they are considered Christianity. So the big chunk of Christianity isn't really Christianity. Mm. It's just a bunch of persons put together that they say they are Christians. So don't get too happy with this one. You want to see another gospel being preached? Okay, let's see these Christian churches. Right, let's go. Here we go. This one is the New Age Movement. This is the one Oprah Winfrey is pushing. Remember, she's running for presidency. One of the main uh, basic beliefs of the New Age movement is what's called monism. And what that means is that everything comes from the same source. So whether we say it's God or whether we say it's man, whatever form of creation it is, it all comes from exactly the same source. You've only got to go to the very first verse of the Bible where we read that in the beginning God created. The all uh, powerful eternal God created man. And therefore man is different to God. But not in the New Age movement. In the New Age movement I can be as much God as God is if God really exists. Moving on from this we come to one of the second major belief systems of the New Age movement, and that's pantheism. And basically, pantheism means that this God, this force, this power, is within everything and everyone. So everyone has God within them. Everything has God within them. Therefore, we don't need an eternal God outside of us, because the power to be God, who we are, what we can be, with God is within us and we need to find ways to release God. Gnosticism is another major
belief system of the New Age movement. Gnosticism is, is, is having a special knowledge. Gnosticism is where I have a special knowledge that nobody else has and you've got to have that knowledge. So that many groups in the New Age movement would talk about a revelation that they've had. Many groups would talk about something that they've seen that they know that nobody else knows about. The only place you can find it is by coming to them and joining with them. Finally, on the basis of the beliefs, we have relativism. Relativism is a key factor because one of the things that we will actually find is there are many diversities within the New Age movement. There's a oneness, but there's also a diversity because the goalposts all the time keep being moved. When, however, we come to the belief of true Christianity, what we see is there's an eternal God who has spoken. And that word cannot change. That word cannot alter. Relativism is not part of true Christian belief. So what he's saying there with relativism, relative, I can never call it, that big word, <laughs> is that if something doesn't fit in the New Age movement, they change it up and write it different. Mm -hmm. So today, we say this is the order. It's not working out for everybody in the group, so they change it. And, so, and he's saying Christianity just has one word, the Bible, and it can't be changed. That's how it is. Mm -hmm. But in that other belief, you can change it up after you're ready to whatever suits you. And God is inside you. That's why Oprah Winfrey, and many persons believe Oprah when she is in the New Age movement, because anything is her God. She worships, and yeah, you never didn't know that about Oprah, but she's in the New Age movement. And so she released her God. Don't you see she owns a network? And so people believe now. And they follow, and they're like, yeah, listen, if Oprah runs for president in 20 whatever, she may have a lot of votes because people think she's God. She has released her God, so she'll save the United States from all its problems. Oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, Lord is the best way to put it. <laughs> let me give you this one. This set of persons now, they are... <laughs> let me just let you listen to the video. We are Unitarian Universalists. We are people of many paths who are brave, curious, and compassionate thinkers and doers. Every day, people are inundated with information, overwhelmed by demands, and pulled by a culture that seeks to divide us from the web of life. Unitarian Universalism reconnects, bringing people together with meaning and inspiration. We are a house without walls, a congregation without spiritual limits, and a movement that calls you to put more faith in yourself, your community, and your beliefs. We are a faith that honors your mind, your heart, your journey. Simply put, we are a guided path towards a better you and a better world. Grounded in hundreds of years of thoughtful religious communities, we are people of many generations, ethnicities, genders and sexualities, and spiritual backgrounds. People engaged in making the world a better place. People focusing on what really matters, love, justice, integrity, and hope. Unitarian Universalists have different beliefs, but shared values. We are Unitarian Universalists, and at the same time, we may also be agnostic, Buddhist, Christian, Hindu, humanist, Jewish, Muslim, pagan, atheist, believers in God, and those who let the great mystery be. The diversity of beliefs you'll find in a Unitarian Universalist community is one of our strengths. We're always learning how to see the world from a different perspective. What unites us are our core principles that uphold seven real world values, believing in the worthiness of every person, showing compassion and fairness, accepting others for who they are, growing through a personal search for truth, leading with democratic spirit, working for justice, and understanding that everything is interconnected. Seven days a week, Unitarian Universalists live these principles by doing. When we gather, we worship, reflect, 
and remind ourselves what matters most in life. Whatever our age, we learn to live with more wisdom, more awareness, more gratitude, and more soul. We show our values by showing up to answer the call for social justice. We have a track record of standing on the side of love for civil rights, LGBTQ equality, immigration reform, environmental sustainability, reproductive justice, racial justice, and more. Find what it means to live your deepest values out loud. Join us on this extraordinary adventure of faith. At the end you hear the faith come in. <laughs> but you know there's no God in it. And you know what? I can't move with it. They touch on every social issue. Yeah, That's it, how they get people into it. And it wouldn't be so bad if they wouldn't be promoting it as some type of religion. But it's a church! That's what I'm saying. I mean, they're what they're mm, trying they to do churches. is all good stuff, mm. but they But churches so push they have, they have worship Bring services and stuff when you go there. Religion. But this is the only thing I don't understand. Now when I listen to all your stuff, just like what you said, it's logical. Mm -hmm. And if they just had it as a movement, it would be okay. Right. But they say it's a religion. Right. That's where. Now this is the part I don't understand. Logically, everything else can work. There's no really no spirituality in this. Right. But they brought in the spiritual aspect. Now tell me, somebody gotta explain this to me because I can't work it out logically. How <coughs> can someone who is a Christian and someone who is a Buddhist and someone who doesn't believe in God, period? worship under the same building. Mm -hmm. I thought someone who doesn't believe in God doesn't go to church to worship because they don't believe in a higher power. That's what I said. They, they so it's a bunch of baloney. Why they, <laughs> I have why few choice words for it, but I won't tell you. <laughs> because how... Listen. It's like we say, okay, we're going to share a service today. So the Buddhists come. The Christian is here. The Buddhists sit and they meditate. The Christian wants to sing him. Which of them do they do in the service? Mm -hmm. They would have to suit everybody's needs in that service. So they have to take a census and say, okay, Buddhism, Buddhism you have five minutes of meditation. <laughs> you know the Buddhists, they love to play with their beads and pray to the statue of Buddha. So they got to have a statue of Buddha in there because that's Buddhism. Yeah. And at the same time, a Christian is going to say he's going to be and he's going to have the cross over here and he's going to be praying to his Jesus. Well, the person who doesn't believe in God is going to be like, yeah, I'm sipping coffee because this is not my time. He's not in How can this, but listen, this is a true religion and a true church and it's considered under Christianity. I'm going to say, though, do they do that, though, for tax purposes, maybe? No. All right, let me show you how serious this church has become. The person that wrote the book the shack. Yeah. This is the religion he's gone to now. This is where it, this is how the movie spawned off recently because I think they were the ones that helped push him with the movie. Yeah. He had the book and whatever. <laughs> They're not telling what he was before. He was in church. But now, since he did the movie, they tell you where he is now. He's with this church. And that's what he believes. So they helped him to get the movie up. <laughs> So yeah, you got to be careful. So this is a church. This is one of the newer churches that are out there. There's a big one somewhere in Virginia. I just thought maybe they promote it as such just so they But can it's not taxes. a church. But then they have to yeah. keep worship services. Because mm -hmm. if they're promoting it as a church yeah. and it's not really a church, then when the other persons come and find out they're not going to go there, they're going to move on. Because people are going to come, but they worship. And they make it clear that they worship. Mm -hmm. Listen, man, that was that. <laughs> the final one I want to look at is this. It says, But I fear lest somehow, as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Oh my. This, this is a nice way of saying you're dumb in God. <laughs> That's what the Bible is saying here. And you should be easily corrupted. Anything that people tell you, you're going to believe. Listen to what the Bible says. For if he who comes preaches another what? Jesus. So we have people preaching another gospel. And we have people now preaching another Jesus. <laughs> Whom we have not preached or we have not received. A different spirit which we have not received. 
or a different gospel, which we looked at the gospel, which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it because of your dumbness in Christ. That's what it's saying. So this is what the verse here is saying. Now this last one, I want to look at it. It's coming from people. It's a more from a more well um, recognized institution. This one is being um, video is going to be shown by. It. And let me tell you something about this one. This guy is smart. He's attacking Jesus from before, not after. In the sense that all the other persons come and say, I am now the new Messiah. I am now the second coming. I am now the Christ. Well, this guy is going back before and saying, Christ's system was in Judaism before. And when Jesus was born, he grew up and realized that there was a legend of the real Jesus. And so he copied it and made it his own. And that's why... He thinks he was Jesus, but he was just trying to steal Judaism. Thunder, basically. I'm going to let you hear it for yourself. <laughs> the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is the story that transformed a tiny group of believers into the world's largest religion. But was the story really new? <laughs> tablet called the Jesselson Stone, named for respected antiquities collector David Jesselson, has recently surfaced. I don't have anything like it of such a long, prophetic, biblical inscription from that time on stone. The Jesselson Stone threatens to destroy the claim that Christ's crucifixion and resurrection were unique. The sensational claim that made all the headlines was that the writing on the stone indicates that the Christian belief in the resurrection of Jesus wasn't anything new, that the belief that a Messiah might die and be raised after three days already existed in Judaism before the time of Jesus. The tablet, also known as the Gabriel Revelation Stone, tells an apocalyptic story. Much of the wording has eroded. But what remains is a vivid tale of Jerusalem besieged by armies. And a final battle in which a prince of princes will combat the Antichrist. But the most interesting passage is line 80, in which the angel Gabriel commands a prince of princes to do something after three days. Exactly what that command is, no one is sure. <laughs> Time has rendered this passage virtually unreadable. But Hebrew University professor Israel Kanol thinks he knows the answer. Kanol believes that Gabriel is commanding the Prince of Princes to rise from the dead after three days. So Gabriel is speaking to this person and he's telling him, commanding him actually, in three days, leave, resurrect. Canol is perhaps the world's leading expert on messianic figures from the time of Christ. He is out to prove that the stone tells the story of the Messiah before Christ, and that Jesus knew of this Messiah and based his own life on him. Canol's interpretation hinges on a passage in the stone just four words long. Most scholars agree that the first three words are, by three days. So uh, we can see this is line 80. We have first the, the words le shloshet yamin in three days. This is clear, no question about it. Uh, but the debate is on the fourth uh, word. The fourth word has been washed away, and that's where the controversy comes in. According to Israel Kanol, the last word has only one possible meaning, live. To Canole, the angel Gabriel is commanding a prince of princes by three days live. In ancient Hebrew, the word live is sometimes spelled with four letters, Chet, Aleph, Yud, and He. But in line 80 on the stone, only the first three letters of the mystery word are clear. If the last letter exists and turns out to be the letter He, then Canole's translation is correct. The word is live, proving that the story of the resurrection predated Jesus. I don't think you can read the tablet. I think that section where he's seeing in three days rise is illegible. I don't see those letters there. And by the way, 
Neither does anyone else. Some scholars <laughs> believe that the mystery word can be read not as rise or live, but as raise us up. He will raise us up is a common ancient Hebrew phrase meaning God's mercy will be granted to all people. If this translation is accurate, the Jesselson Stone is an interesting find, but not a revolutionary artifact. No. Every time I see this, I want to smack him. <laughs> Judaism! Of course, the thing of thing predates Jesus coming. When did Isaiah, the eagle eye prophesy about Jesus and all of that? It's like probably about 600 or 700 years before mm -hmm. it happened. <laughs> I've always been saying that. And then you have other prophets that were saying things hundreds of years about Jesus before. Look at um, that scripture when they talked about Jesus and the donkey when he was going to Jerusalem. Remember there was a year of 400 years of silence after the last book of the Old Testament to the book of the New Testament. 400 years of silence. And so at that time when that guy talked about Jesus coming to Jerusalem on the donkey, whether or not we want to act, find exactly when it happened, it's over 400 years. <laughs> so yes, it predate Jesus. Other scriptures predate Jesus. Other things that were written predate Jesus. But they all pointed back to Jesus. Now the next thing that this man is not telling you. With the temple being burned and Jerusalem. Oh, well, but that's in the Bible. Saying that was going to happen. Predating Jesus that the temple is going to be burned, that it's yeah. going to be destroyed, yeah. and all of that and stuff, and and people were saying it's even there's even part of it in Revelation too, when the people are saying how long is this going to happen? So there is a part that he just read it that's in Revelation as well. So he ain't find not new. <laughs> he just found things that are actually in the Bible already, but because he wants it to say the Messiah never came, because Jesus is not the Messiah. So there is another Jesus. And that's where we need to get to. So that's why. And the Messiah is coming through Judaism. And so basically there is another Jesus. And that's what's happening in Israel. As I always tell you, they are still waiting on the Messiah. Yeah. So they are still waiting on the other Jesus. But they're going to wait in vain. They're going to wait. Because he ain't coming. <laughs> so to wrap everything up. As Christians, we like to hide in our little bubble of the church. You know, and we think... You know, if we go to church and ignore the signs, then it's not happening around us and it doesn't concern us, so it's not happening. But the truth of the matter is, the scripture, what we're seeing now, is being fulfilled, right? And we still think we have a lot of time. So we think. Because all of those things that we saw now are current. They are not like, not happening now. They are happening that the scripture talked about. So how much time do we have left? I don't know. <laughs> Many people will tell you they know about me. I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't know. But all I know, the signs are really writing down. And finally, this is what I want to say. Since these scriptures are found true and current right now in what is happening in our lives now, what else does the Bible point out that is happening in today's world that's current? Because those are not end of day scriptures. <laughs> those are the scriptures that are going to, that things that were going to take place. Now people might, oh, they were taking place a long time. No, in my grandmother days, there was nobody running on money. And, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> the worst we had was somebody messing around with a woman back in the days and said, please. That's why we started with Jimmy Swag and he would say, please forgive me, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then he comes back and says, his voice makes a difference. <laughs> And then they caught him with a hooker again. But well, that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying, this is what is happening now. And so when the Bible talked about all of these things, it looked hard to say it was going to really happen. But look, it's happening now and it's current. So when people are saying, well, the Bible is not real and this is not true, I only have one thing to say to them. It's very sure that God is coming back. That's Bible study.